All right, looks like we're ready to go. Once again, I am Dr. Josh Mortar with Mortar Family Chiropractic here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Now, when I say I'm a chiropractor, most people think of uh, back pain, neck pain, maybe a chiropractor has helped you or a loved one with some headaches in the past. It's true, as a profession, we are fantastic at dealing with musculoskeletal complaints. But in my opinion, if you're only seeing a chiropractor when you're in pain, that's like robbing a bank to steal the pens. So today I have an opportunity to share some information with you. And I could just give you this Tony Robbins motivational speech, get you all fired up about health and wellness. Maybe you'd eat a salad this afternoon or uh, go for a walk tonight. But you wouldn't really change anything about your health and wellness journey. And frankly, for most Americans, that journey is pretty bleak. And I care too much about my community to not say anything. So instead, today, I'm gonna to boldly step out. I'm gonna challenge our entire healthcare system, the way we think about health and wellness. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna do it in a way that's very relatable. So we're gonna talk about stress. And I think everybody in today's environment can relate to stress. You see, Stanford did a study a few years ago, and they found the average American is under more stress in a 30-day period than our grandparents were in a 30-year working career. That's a lot of stress. In order to wrap our heads around it, we've got to look at the sources. So they used physical, chemical, and emotional sources. I think most people get the physical stress. That's the bumps and the bruises, the accidents, the injuries, the traumas that we have over our lifetime. But those can come back to haunt us years down the road. Things like arthritis or degenerative disc disease. A lot of times doctors say that's normal. But if that were true, everyone would have it. Why do some people have horrible crippling arthritis but not everyone does. The second one is emotional stress. And I think we can all relate to this today. The emotional stress is the schedules we keep, the deadlines we put on ourselves. Uh, most families are either dual income or single parent homes. Then our kids today are busier than ever before with more activities. Many of us are doing distance learning or we're having to transport our kids. Our, our emotional stress levels are certainly higher than ever before. Then the third source was the chemical stress. Now we can go down lots of rabbit holes with this one. We can blame it on uh, genetically modified foods or chemtrails or, uh, or soil depletion. Lots of different causes for the chemical stress in our lives. But at the end of the day, we're under more chemical stress than at any point in human history. You see, the average woman, before she leaves the house for work in the morning, has exposed our skin, our largest organ, to 36,000 different chemical compounds. Guys, we do a little better, about 24,000. Now, we're beautifully and wonderfully created. We can deal with that if we have the right tools in our toolbox. That's our liver's job. And the tools that it uses are the nutrition that we eat. You look at the average American diet, it's all artificial flavors, artificial preservatives, artificial colors, artificial sweeteners. That's just more toxins leading to faster chemical breakdown. And with the knowledge that most of our immune system starts in our gut, no wonder we're sicker than ever before. Autoimmune diseases through the roof, uh, new diagnoses. 20 years ago, did you know anyone with uh, peanut allergies or irritable bowel or chronic uh, uh, colitis, any of these things? Those are things that we have in record numbers that never used to affect us. Something has changed. Well, the other side of the stress coin is how we relieve stress. And if you look at the, the average American lifestyle today, it's not the same as what our grandparents used to do. You see, our grandparents would work uh, nine to five and come home and have a garden or they would be physically active. Uh, maybe remember Victory Gardens? Um, or on the weekends, they would, they would go to church on Sunday and have a family dinner afterwards. Uh, they'd have a bridge club or, or a, a card game on Friday night. They would socialize, right? Where do most of us socialize now? That's right, social media. The American Psychiatric Association came out with uh, new guidelines a few years ago. They have a new diagnosis called social media depression where we're looking at how awesome everybody else's life is and getting clinically depressed because ours doesn't mirror the beauty that we see there. What we're doing isn't working. Now, we're hardworking Americans and, and, and we're not gonna let a little ache and pain stop us, right? So we keep working, we keep going 
until our health has failed us, until we're broken, until we're sick, we can't go anymore. That's when we'll finally seek some help. That's when we end up in the doctor's office. Worse yet, let's say we end up in the emergency room. You ever been to the emergency room? Not a fun place. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, if you're gonna have a car accident, set yourself on fire, have a, a traumatic event, our acute care system is the best in the world. But when we're going there to make uh, healthcare decisions, that's not a healthcare decision, that's a sick care decision. You see, we went out of there as quickly, as cheaply, and as painlessly as possible. We want the McDonald's of healthcare, right? So let's be honest, uh, what can they do there? What can, what can they do if we go to the doctor's office? It's really only two things. They can prescribe a medication or they can do surgery. Well, nobody wants surgery. Uh, the doctors know the risk. They're gonna put that off as long as they can. And so that really leaves us medication. Today, we have more drugs than we know what to do with. We got uh, NyQuil, we got DayQuil, we got non-habit forming ZQuil. Then we need Red Bull, Monster Energy, Five Hour Energy. That's more toxins, that's, that's more chemical stress leading to faster breakdown, leading to more side effects. Ooh, ooh, side effects. That word is one of my biggest pet peeves. Uh, I don't think there's any such thing as side effects. We all know drugs have an effect, there's a desired effect, but then they also have side effects, additional effects. And most people are on, well, actually the average American by age 55 is on eight different medications. And frankly, nobody has any idea what those eight medications are gonna do in your body over the long term. I don't think there's any such thing as side effects. All those effects are part of what that drug does. Again, when we're making those decisions, we're not making them out of a place of health and wellness. We're making those sick care decisions. And that's how we end up on those eight different medications. How many of you think that more medications and more drugs is the pathway to health? Uh, the American population is about 5% of the world population, yet we take over 90% of the prescription medications in the world. I'd probably be okay with that if we were the healthiest nation in the world, but the World Health Organization rates that 80 industrialized nations every year. We rank 77, 78, 79. We're not getting anything for our money. We need to do something different. Let me see if you agree with me here. Um, Remember in your parents' bathroom, uh, maybe your grandparents, they, they had the, the bathroom sink and above the sink there was a cabinet. The cabinet had a mirror on it. What did we call those, those cabinets with the mirror? A medicine cabinet, that's right. So we have a special place in our homes for all these wonderful medications that are supposed to make us healthy. But would you be healthy if that medicine cabinet was packed full of medications or would you be healthy if it was empty and you didn't need any of that? empty. See, you, you think what I think, we're on the same page, but that's not how we live our lives. I get it. I, you know, we watch these drug commercials on TV and it's beautiful people riding the horse on the beach and they're having this wonderful time and they're naming all these, all these symptoms and, and we're going, I have those symptoms and, and subconsciously we're thinking, I want to live that life. But less than 6% of what they say during those commercials is even true. And they spend three times more money advertising those side effects. So what we're doing with those isn't really working for us. Did you know that the uh, cost leader for medical malpractice insurance is adverse drug reactions? Meaning that the doctor appropriately prescribed that medication, you still have a reaction and something horrible happens. Even the FDA says one third of the prescription medications Americans are taking today are completely unnecessary. The other problem we have is when we go to the doctor, they're painting us with these broad strokes. They're saying, uh, you're a man or a woman in this age group with these symptoms. Well, here's how we treat that. When was the last time somebody sat down with you and looked at your family history, uh, looked at your lifestyle, what you're doing, and, and made some suggestions, made, said, suggested some changes, helped you set some targets and goals, and then gave you a pathway or a plan to get there. We don't typically do that. Most Americans, we just say, well, it's genetic. My, my parents had it or my grandparents had it. 
And folks, it's not true. It's just not true. Harvard did a study and they looked at the top 100 chronic health conditions uh, that affect most Americans. And they found that 25% of them were truly genetic, meaning your dad had a gene, your mom had a gene, they came together and turned it on in you. 75% of the chronic illnesses we suffer with are lifestyle choices. That means that we can control them, we can change them. With everything I've talked about here, I promise to keep this at 10 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap it up. With everything we've talked about here, how many of you wanna to live to be 94 years old? Well, if not, why not? Is it because you know what the average 94 year old in America looks like? Are you having the same image I am, someone in the nursing home slumped over, sick and ill? Well, I want you to think of it this way. I've done a lot of volunteer work in nursing homes. And every nursing home is set up similarly. There's a, there's a great room. And in that great room, there's always a hallway. On one side of the hallway, uh, there's some sofas and some chairs, and uh, that's where the TV is. Everybody over there is slumped over in that wheelchair on oxygen, and, and they look like they're just waiting to die. But on the other side of the room, there's the card table set up, and people are playing games. They're waiting for the bus to come pick them up to go on a tour. Everyone there is the same age. So what's the difference between those, those two groups? Nothing more than the choices they made about their health before they got there. So then let me ask you this question. When should you start taking your health seriously? When should you start making some positive health changes? If you wanna be healthy at 94, should you start at like 93? Maybe you should get an early start. Start at 90, 80, 70. I think you see where this is going. We need to make those changes now. So if I've said something during this talk that's made you think that you need to make some changes in your health or your wellness, or maybe someone that you care about and love needs to make some changes, please share this video with them or, or let them know that we're here. Now, at the very end of this, there's gonna be an option for you to, to uh, uh, schedule an appointment with us. And I encourage you to come in and let's see what's possible for you. Let's get started making those changes. And until next time, Stay healthy, my friends.